Yep. This is the penultimate episode, and next week this uh, series is coming to an end. And to be honest, episode 7 is not as cringy as episode 6, um, and it's very hard to top that. In this episode, we have some two tried and true tropes uh, the switching bodies and the thrown to parallel reality tropes uh, together. So our idea is that we have the evil Vimes from the um, end of episode 6 and not our Vimes, who stars in this show, chasing bodies and, you know, chasing realities and so on. And so not our Vimes is in a prison in a nightmare book that has, does, hasn't, doesn't have a patrician and certain cast members like uh, Carrot or Lady Sibu also work there. I mean, Carrot is Carrot and he's a jailer of uh, the prison, while well, Lady Sibyl is closer to the Sibyl we know and love, uh, minus her body type, of course, and her age, because, uh, of course, uh, says the thin, attractive, younger woman, God forbid they went for an older, more uh, body positive woman, and actually there's, there's something very interesting about this uh, other version of this old Sibyl, is that it shows a lot of her nurturing self and in the reality that the world takes place in, which is not this world we know and love. I'll say it again and again because that's very important for the show and all the changes and I'm not raising over the changes too much right now because I realize that they're not supposed to be the world's members we know and love. I get it. But see, this Lady Sibyl also has a very nurturing uh, self, but it is twisted into a vigilante by this reality season, by this world, this veterinary has created. And it's a darker reflection of uh, our work we know and love, I guess. So I'll give that to the producers, it's uh, very interesting, and you can see this nurturing side by how she's introduced in episode 1. This is like uh, arresting criminals to teach them. She's a teacher, she wants to see the best in people in her own way, which is very interesting and very true to the character. And yeah, I'll give them props. I mean, the show is not doing everything wrong, but still, it's doing a lot of things wrong. Meanwhile, we have the worst uh, vines possible, manipulated by Carcer to murder Lady Sibyl. We have uh, the, what's his name, the assassin that they arrested uh, two episodes ago, getting out of prison and trying to also murder Lady Sibyl in order to get back into the guild and all this kind of stuff. And the rest of the world is suspecting that Lady Sibyl, the last noble in this Art Morbok, is the last artifact. We have a lot of hilarity in showing us. Uh, they start to suspect that this Vimes is not their Vimes and other stuff, and shenanigans, yada yada yada. And we have sort of an interesting standoff towards the end. However, um, I'll probably have an overall review after episode 8 airs, and I can speak about the entire season 1, uh, spoiler free, and tell me whether I like and like, and we know that there are some parts that are quite good, and some problems with the show uh, that exist and hinder a lot of our satisfaction with it. Apart from the changes they did, of course, I mean, the casting is great. And after seeing this episode, I can see most of the cast um, switching to their proper versions from the books, apart from Angua. But uh, see, this Angua will probably make a great Nobby. But that's another thing. And they will be great in it. I can see them as the proper Discworld um, characters. Well, maybe not, um, maybe not Angua, maybe not Chiri, but whatever. And of course, there's a great, uh, the great set design. The set design is actually quite interesting and unique, and really makes this so in the part. But the major issue I have with the series, and in this episode I can totally feel it, is the tonal inconsistency. And I think this stems from the fact that the show just tries so hard to be serious, deep and dramatic. And I can see why they're doing that, and it's an interesting um, approach to a darker Discworld. But uh, 
the plain ridiculousness of the setting and of the quirky acting of certain characters like Noah, certain non-vimes, is not helping at all. It just feels it's uh, too so smooth to get. And yes, there are some moments where some of the signature plus the humor kicks in. Behind that one, Warden's hand opens all of them. But a lot of the jokes, and believe me, there are a lot of uh, good jokes in this uh, series, are lost in the overall darkness and dry hardiness of the show, and the timing is always poor because there is some tepid drama happening, and then we have a joke uh, kicking, then more tepid drama, and it's just never uh, quite uh, proper. Uh, I don't know if it's a writing thing, if it's a di direction thing, uh, but the, time, the comedic timing is almost always off. Yeah, I think they're trying to be punk, I get that, they went for a punk. Uh, this world, then that would be cool. The set is there, and some of the edginess is the playful edginess is there. However, okay, um, it reminds me of one night some um, 10 years ago I was in South Wales and I was dragged into an um, indie gig. I am a metal guy and I used to be more of a little guy back then and I suffer throughout the show. However, uh, there are three or four bands playing, band number two was kinda great. And I was surprised and singled it, or let me set it this way. Out of the three bands, band number two had a great, great bassist. He was nailing it. And I was pleasantly surprised. He was carrying the band and he was energetic and uh, his playing was great, I had a lot of fun watching them, and towards the end of uh, the show, the singer of the band says that uh, thanks to the bassist, who is not a regular bassist, he is a guest filling in, and he's playing in a XYZ uh, punk band. And it all made sense, there was a punk rocker uh, rocking with the indie kids, and I don't want to bash any indie music fans, I mean, it's not their fault, they have no taste in music. But the more I was the show, the more it feels like what I felt there. Not something I want to watch, and it's not quite working properly, and it's experimental and out there, and that's what it's supposed to be. And at certain parts, some great punkiness kicks in, and uh, yeah, it's like those good parts that exist there, of their by mistake, not by design. So yeah, for me it's still a minus, it's uh, more boring than Creens in episode 7. I'd love to hear your opinions about this show, and if you kind of like this show, do you also kind of like indie rock for some reason? Or not indie rock, indie music, because this band didn't even rock. And yeah, this series uh, goes for punk rock, but it comes out as indie, which is the same, because they have some good ideas in there, and they're lost in this sloppy, happy drama. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next week with um, the series finale review, and I guess an overall review of the season. And you know what, you can stick around if you want to subscribe because I'm doing a lot of fantasy and horror book reviews and some movie stuff and all this kind of thing. Maybe I'll go into more into metal and punk and why well, I hate indie bands at some point, but yeah, stick around. We'll have fun, I promise. Thank you for watching.